Hello, my name is Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates and welcome back to another video where we're going to be looking into our game week four teams and discussing our plans for the upcoming game week. OK, so we're going to get kicked off into my game week 14. Game week three was a pretty good week for me. I clawed some of the points back that maybe I lost over the weeks gone by. A Doji, 12-pointer. Bruno Fernandes, 12-pointer. Some of these players that were playing well in those first couple of game weeks but weren't getting the points actually got some points for me in game week three, which was really good. So hopefully that continues on to game week four, the last game week before the international break. Obviously, it's a Friday deadline at half six, so don't forget that if you're watching this video. Starting off in goal, Andre Onana obviously came away with that Forest game with zero points, got booked for time wasting. Obviously, you can see those two goals really, really early on. Not the best, not the best of game weeks really for him as a whole. Um, against Arsenal, though, I think like we saw against Spurs, he'll pick up a lot of saves. I know we said this last week against Forest, but unfortunately they actually went in the net. Um, but yeah, no, I think he'll be, I think he'll be back amongst it in terms of save points again. Not really expecting a clean sheet at the Emirates. That'll be a bit of a miracle as a Man United fan right now. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be okay. What's your thoughts on him, Ben? Obviously, you own him as well. Are you maybe looking to get rid of him right now? Or do you think there's just not that many better goalkeeper options at the moment? No, I just, I just don't think it's worth making goalkeeper transfers during the, during the season for me. I sort of, once I pick a goalie, I sort of stick with them until at least the wild card. Um, mm. And I think there's a lot of other positions that we have worries about in both of our teams that I think we should probably put our focus and attention on. Attention on. We've seen Onana, we've seen he has the whole scoring ability with the saves that he can produce and with the clean sheets that Manchester United can potentially get. So for me, he isn't sort of a priority transfer out. And a keeper transfer is a luxury transfer, I like to call it, when you have no sort of other other moves that you need to make yeah 100 uh, percent. moving on into my defense then so we're again playing at three three five two at the moment obviously i haven't made my transfers at the time of recording i will talk through my transfer plans towards the end of the team though um a stupid and newcastle at home obviously brighton at home tend to be pretty decent i know they've lost to west ham at home um i'm expecting a better performance i thought they although they played well going forwards defensively they were really really poor a stupid and obviously three attack and returns so far this season is what really we're hoping him to do i think if you were to say that you're transferring a stupid and out this game week i wouldn't really disagree too much with you it's the only the ownership that would really scare me as much with him newcastle at home and i think manchester united away next week i think they conceded in both they've conceded nearly seven expected goals so far this season which is really really poor um, so defensively, there's not much upside to that Brian pick. We spoke about it um, in our deadline dilemmas video. So if you haven't seen that already, definitely go check that out. Um, Destiny Adoji, I've been banging his drum ever since game week one. He pro finally provided in game week three with that assist and clean sheet. I think Tottenham so far this season haven't been awful defensively. I know at the start of the season, we thought this Tottenham team really, really needs some improvement. But with the new signings of obviously Mickey van der Ven and then Adoji coming into that team, I think they look quite decent defensively. Not the best, don't get me wrong, but definitely not looking like they're going to leak a lot of goals right now. Burnley away as well. I think Burnley, you know, only played the two games so far. Scored against Aston Villa is really good goal as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in that game. I think it'll be quite an interesting to watch. And then obviously Levi Colwell to round off the back three. Nottingham Forest at home. I'll expect them to keep a clean sheet um, unless they have some absolute catastrophe like United did at the weekend in the first five minutes. I think Nottingham Forest are a decent side going forward, but I also think Chelsea defensively are pretty strong as well with their new recruits back there. What's your thoughts on that defence, Ben? Is there any major alarm bells right now? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. I think the the picks there are, are all decent ones. Um, Esther Pinion's probably the only question mark, but that's because of Brighton's sort of poor starts of the season in terms of defensive um, numbers. Um, I think, yeah, I agree with you. Spurs look a lot sort of more solid defensively, and and so do Chelsea actually. And and Colwell even sort of fills in and and sort of rotates around to the left back position at, at times. And yeah, I know that doesn't sort of lead to him getting too much forward down the pitch due to Chilwell but um, it, it's nice to have, know that you've got him in there nailed on in that Chelsea team regardless so yeah very solid um, opening start to your team. Yeah and then moving on into the midfield uh, it's the same as it has been since game week one so we've got the Arsenal double up of Saka and Martinelli who face United at home this week then obviously Ebrich Yeze, Wolves at home this week and then Bruno Fernandes at Arsenal away and then Mo Salah who has Villa at home 
Um, touching on the Arsenal boys, I think Saka has impressed me enough so far this season. I'll see the, the fact that he took the penalty at the weekend is a big, big plus. The fact, even if they're just being rotated between Odegaard and Saka, I think it's a much bigger benefit than obviously him losing them outright. So that was good to see. Obviously, in play from open play, he's probably been Arsenal's biggest threat as well so far this season. So yeah, he's a definite keep for me at the moment. Obviously, eight point seven million as well. Martinelli, on the other hand, not really impressed me too much. I think his expected date is quite low considering the player that we you saw last season, especially. Um, I think Arsenal were yet to really figure out their best sort of start in eleven and Arteta's best start in eleven. I think that's mainly down uh, down to Gabriel Jesus being injured for the first three game weeks. Obviously, he's now back, so that could improve Martinelli. So if you wanted to keep him, I wouldn't really be too much against it. But I think, as we mentioned in that Deadline Dilemmas video, Madison, Sterling, so many midfielder options that are absolutely banging at the moment. And I feel like I'm just missing out on points by not having these guys in my team and having someone like Martinelli who just keeps blanking uh, for the last two game weeks. So that's he is probably going to be transferred out this game week. Eze is just super, super frustrating. I've chose like the most frustrating 6.5 million midfielder so far this season. He's racking up all the expected data, but not showing anything from it. I think Jordan Ayew's got two two or three returns so far this season, and Eze's got none, which goes to show. But Wolves at home is a great fixture for him. So hopefully he can actually get me a return so far. Otherwise, going forwards, I know the fixtures are good, but I might just have to move over to maybe an Embuemo for the 0.3 more, just because... Even with Mbwemo, you know that he's going to score goals and he's got a lot more goal threat than Eze. Eze's got a lot of assist threat, but it's just not quite ticking there at the moment. Bruno Fernandes obviously capitalised on that expected data at the weekend against Nottingham Forest. I think Man United, even against those low blocks, he's so instrumental. So it'd be interesting to see how he does against Arsenal away. Have no real issue playing him. He's definitely not a transfer out either. I think United two most talismanic players are Rashford and him. So if they're going to do anything at the Emirates, it's going to be through either of those two guys. And then Mo Salah as well, Mr. Five Pointer, five points in every game week so far. I think he's been a bit unlucky to only get five points in every game week. He's looked quite decent. And I think that Newcastle game is really annoying from an owner's perspective, because if they don't get that red card, I think he gets involved in the game a lot more. Um, so happy to take the assist anyway, due to them being down to 10 men. But Aston Villa at home, I personally think that Aston Villa haven't been the best defensively so far this season. So it should be a good game for Salah owners and he'll be sat there on the on the vice captain. What's your thoughts on that midfield, Ben, and maybe those transfer plans going forward? Yeah, I think um, if you're looking at, at the Martinelli to be sold, I think that out of all of those um, midfielders, he's probably the one that's underperforming the most, even with one return over over Eze, who I think is probably last chance saloon for him. Wolves at home is a... Mm. Is a plum fixture really, especially with sort of everything going on with with City potentially getting one of Wolves' as players and and the new manager and everything like that. I think it's primed for for Eze to get a return of some sort. And if he doesn't, I'd I'd probably be looking at shifting him on. Um, yeah, I agree with you. No issue with Bruno Fernandez at all. Um, in that team, his his numbers look good. And Salah again, five points is all well and good, but for for an asset that you're paying that much for. Um, you want to be sort of assured of more points. Um, so again, if he doesn't perform, there may be a conversation to have to move him on as well to, to one of these better performing midfielders um, currently in FPL right now, sort of likes of Madison, Sterling, um, etc. Yeah, definitely agree with that. He's a lot of money just sitting there at the moment. Moving on into the attack, uh, Jao Pedro, he's definitely going to be coming out this week. Obviously, two bench appearances in a row for him. We knew that it, that was probably going to be the case at the start of the season. Probably didn't think it would be as bad as it is um, right now. So he started the first, looked really good, and then just sort of fallen out of favour with the Zerbi at the moment. He decided to start Ferguson and Welbeck up top against West Ham, which I personally didn't think worked very well at all. Um, so, yeah, not the best for, not the best from Jao Pedro, but happy to take his return in game week one and sort of run away with it. Haven't lost any value on him. Obviously, he rose to 5.6 and then has dropped back down to 5.5. So, if you had him since game week one, he's still the same value. And then there's Erling Haaland on the captaincy. I've had two penalty misses on my captain two weeks in a row, which is really, really frustrating. But his numbers don't lie. He's just always there, always ready to score. He points dodged a bit against Sheffield United. I thought he could have easily had a hat-trick in that game. What was your thoughts on Haaland and Ben in that game? Is it frustrating for owners? Yeah, but it also showed a lot of promise for me because he never once looked rattled or, or gave up and he was just relentless in getting his goal, um, mm. which is a good thing to, to come out of that. And 
some managers may be put off captain them in not this week, but in other weeks going forward, just because of that. Um, I think obviously he's the best captaincy option this week. Fulham at home is a great fixture, especially with how poor defensively Fulham have looked. Um, and then, yeah, Jao Pedro is, is definitely looking like a sell. Um, did you say who it was going to be? Um, no. So at the minute, I'm looking at Johan Visser personally, just because I can't really move to Mbemo in that midfield or don't really want to with the other assets that I can afford at that price. So mm. I think, Johan Visser provides a good alternative to Mbwemo, like almost like the second best compared to maybe, I don't know, like if I was to, you can't even choose Richard because he's still a midfielder. There's not really that many forward options like we touched on in the dilemma video. So I think, yeah, Visser is probably my best or the best pick if you can't really afford it. Like me with Salah, you can't really afford too much money to upgrade him. Um, or potentially I could downgrade him to a 4.5 if you play. So Two options there would be Semenyo of Bournemouth and then obviously Cameron Archer's just signed for Sheffield United. I expect him to play a good chunk of minutes for them as well. So there's there's two ways there, but obviously I've got to be careful because if Haaland is benched one week, one of those 4.5 million strikers will have to play because I'll be going with that one forward up top. What's your thoughts on on that Jao Pedro shout, Ben? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the uh, the moves that you're planning there. Um, and like I said, there's not actually too many options at all to go for and and this are sort of priced well enough to to negate the risk with the potential points as well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I've got no issues with that at all. Awesome. Then moving on to my bench, nothing really happening down here. Turner obviously outscored Onana by three points last week. Let's hope he doesn't do the same thing this week against Chelsea. Um, Kabore is going to be my first sub just because of Botman. Uh, obviously, the injury is not as bad as first thought, apparently, but we don't really know to the extent at the time of recording of how bad he is. I'm sure on socials we would update you as and when we know. Um, but yeah, he'll be second on my bench at the moment. And then Mubama is there as the third 4.5 million forward. Not yet to get a minute in that team for West Ham. And obviously, uh, Mohamed Kudus has signed from Ajax, which I expect to he can potentially play up top as well for West Ham. So I think looking at Mubama, probably not the best pick as a 4.5 million forward. But, you know, I'm not going to cry about that. And on the wild card, we'll definitely be changing. Okay, so moving on into my team, as you can see here, we've kept with Onana in goal, um, like Josh alluded to, and, and like I've also said, I think there are potential points there for Onana to have in terms of save points, and as well, it's not like me to want to make keeper transfers early on into the season. At the moment, we've got a back four, this is obviously subject to change, I've got two free transfers and a bit of money in the bank. We've got Chilwell in there against Nottingham Forest at home. I really liked how attacking Chilwell has looked and he's he was unlucky. Well, not unlucky. He should have had a massive haul on Friday night. He should have taken a shot and scored the goal there. Um, Ruben Diaz, I thought, was unlucky to, to not keep a clean sheet against Sheffield United. If it wasn't for Carl Walker doing all sorts at the back, back heels and everything, <laughs> then we may have seen that. Um, come to fruition. He seems like the most nailed on defender as well. We saw a Kanji out through um, a illness. We've got Esther Pinion in there at the moment. Now he could really, he could be benched. Um, I've got quite a bit of sort of depth in this team at the moment. Um, Newcastle Holmes, not the greatest fixture in Brighton, haven't looked great defensively, but he's in there for now. And then we've got Rico Henry coming in for his first start for me. I've had him in from the beginning and he, I'm potentially starting in Bournemouth at home. Um, I mean, Brentford have conceded the second least expected goals out of any team this season. So the first three games, they've looked really defensively solid. Um, the attacking threat, there isn't too much from Henry at the moment other than when they sort of revert to a five at the back. But that is usually against the bigger teams. I don't expect them to do so against Bournemouth. Um, yeah, that's the defence. Josh, what's your first initial thoughts? Yeah, really, really solid lineup. Like you said with Chilwell, he looks like the go-to asset. He's one player that I can't quite squeeze into my team and... Thank God he tried to pass that ball across on Friday night. Because otherwise, that would have been a huge haul for him. We saw a lot of defenders go big this week. So, yeah, happy that Cole will manage to match his points there. Ruben Diaz, like you said, minutes-wise, he's pretty assured. And you can't really complain too much when it's... Well, you can complain, but you can't do too much when it's an individual error that leads to the goal that they concede. Um, you know, Carl Walker just helping out his homeboy team there. And then, it's stupid now, like you say, I would probably like to bench him if I could this week, personally. Um, like you say, Brighton's just awful defensive numbers, especially with the opposition that they face. Like Luton and Wolves in those two fixtures, it's, it doesn't look good, um, especially when they face someone with the attacking capability of a Newcastle who looks really, really good so far this season. And then, yeah, Rico Henry, 
Really, really solid option. Solid and steady. Bournemouth at home. I thought Bournemouth created some decent chances against Spurs. Nothing too crazy. So, like you said, Brentford are very solid defence and probably will try and keep them out. Um, obviously conceded a lot of low XG shots, um, which works really well for Flecken in goal. So, if you're if you're looking for all a keeper change, I think Flecken is a Probably one of the go-to guys at the moment in terms of in terms of keeper keeper subs. Okay, so moving on into the midfield, and this is where I think it's more subject to change um, than anywhere else at the moment. We've got, as you can see, four midfielders from that Arsenal United game, um, which is far too many for me to like. Um, the plan is probably going to be to sell Martinelli in here, um, as much as sort of it pains me to do because I've, I've sort of been loyal to Martinelli over the last couple of years on FPL. I think. The stats just aren't good enough to, to warrant keeping him for now. So that midfielder slot will likely be James Madison or Raheem Sterling come the deadline. I think those two have sort of been superb in the opening weeks of the Premier League season. Um, we've got Bruno Fernandes and Rashford in there as well. Again, I, I'm much more confident on Bruno Fernandes than I am on Marcus Rashford. But we've seen sort of... The, the performances of both of these players improving massively in game week three um, with Rashford producing two assists, Bruno a goal and an assist. So I do think um, United are on the turn somewhat in terms of their form. And I think they needed something like going 2-0 down to Nottingham Forest to sort of kick them into gear for this season. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I am may be looking at benching uh, Rashford potentially. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's a bit of a benching headache this week because we've also got Matoma in there. And again, this is a tough, tough fixture. Um, Newcastle at home. I think the fact that it's home for Brighton, I may keep them because like we said before in our in our previous video, Brighton can score against anyone and I'd back Matoma to be involved in it if they do. Um, so yeah, that's the midfield at the moment, Josh. I've, I'm planning on a potential Martinelli sale for Sterling or Madison. Is there any sort of restructuring or rejigging that you would do in that midfield or would you would you start sort of the free Arsenal and, and United midfielders? Yeah, I, I have no issue with playing Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes personally. I think Arsenal have looked quite poor defensively to start the season and against Nottingham Forest we saw Rashford finally get moved out to the left-hand side um, with Martial starting. Um, there's obviously chat about Rasmus Hoyland also being available for the Arsenal fixture. So I think it'll be more prominent that Rashford does play out wide left. And when he does, he's a much better FPL asset, as we saw in game week three. I know he only picked up the two assists, but he just looked a lot more dangerous. And playing against that low block, he was a very good asset to own. Very scary to not own in, 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 my, in, in my case. So, yeah, I think he's a definite play. Obviously, we saw what he can do at the Emirates last season. You know, he's, he scores goals and that's what he's there to do. He's Man United's talisman in terms of goal scoring. So, yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd be the one that I'd definitely play. Um, I have no real problem. I think there's going to be goals in that game because both defences can't defend at the moment. So, yeah, it's going to be a case of who scores the most to win that tie. So, yeah, I'd definitely start all three of those guys. OK, and moving on to up front, um, we've obviously got Erling Haaland as the captain. Um, and at the moment, Jao Pedro fills the bench. But my initial thoughts are, is I, I want to sell Jao Pedro. I don't think he's guaranteed in his minutes. And the players that I'd be looking to get in is potentially Jackson. But I'm much more keen on Sterling, um, just because they're the same price. Sterling's midfielder gets more points for a goal and his stats are just as good as Jackson going forwards in terms of attacking numbers. Um, so that's the dilemma that I've got. Who to replace João Pedro with? And then the other dilemma is who who would I start that replacement ahead of in game week four? Josh, what are your thoughts on this dilemma? As you can see, I've also got Bulldog on the bench, who is a decent option for game week four with a home fixture. A very nice one against Everton. Yeah, let me know what you think, Josh. Yeah, it's it's a tough one to be in, but it's a luxury one to be in as well. You know, there's worse problems to have. I think it's it's one of those where like you've got a, for me, it'd be Matoma versus Jackson. Uh, who you're going to play out of those two? I think Newcastle defensively have been pretty solid. They've only conceded three point five xg to New uh, to Manchester City, Liverpool, and Aston Villa. Three very offensive sides. So I don't think they'll concede a cluster of goals. So it's just whether you can see Matoma getting one of those attack and returns there. Um, for me, up front, it is really difficult. Like I, I mentioned it when I was thinking about the Pedro move, there's just not that many forwards that spark of the interest, really. So, yeah, maybe, obviously, you could cash the money down to to, to another 4.5 or, like you say, move to Jackson. But then, for me, I don't think Jackson's 
performed well enough to, to warrant it. And like you say, I, I really prefer Raheem Sterling at the same price. If he was cheaper, I would definitely go for Jackson, but because they're the same price, it's almost a no-brainer, really. So I'm not really helping you out in making a decision right <laughs> now, um, but it's just a tough one to make. And you're going to have to maybe even think about rolling into the next game. week. Obviously, there's an international break. There could be all sorts that happen. And obviously, you can just do that Martinelli to Sterling or Madison switch on its own. So... And you have cash in the bank as well. So, yeah, yeah, that's the only thing you can maybe take because you've got cash in the bank. You can maybe take the point one more that Pedro drops and save you the headache for this game week. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the the likelihood is if, if I only use the one free transfer and roll the second one into the international break, which could be in itself a sensible move to make, um, it gives me 2.8 million in the bank still. If that's that's based on now Sterling being priced at 7.1, Martinelli at 8 million. Um, it gives me 2.8 to work with, which allows me, if I wanted to, to get up to, to Watkins, basically, which is, other than Haaland, the most expensive striker in the game. So I could get pretty much whoever I wanted to from that point onwards. Um, so, yeah, it's it's something to, to bear in mind for me as, as a possibility that I may roll one of my transfers again um and and going into an international break having only made a couple of couple of transfers it just shows that the squad is getting there um but there there is a couple of changes that that does need to be made going forward yeah so it's a tough dilemma but like you said it's a relatively nice one to have having a little bit of a benching headache okay so that is our team selection for game week four the final game week before the international break as we said let us know what you think me and ben should do with our transfers both got two free transfers to you so both are looking to make some really big moves this game week uh, let us know what you guys are doing in the comments as well if you're bringing in some of the likes of sterling madison or any of the assets that we did discuss yeah and always please remember to like follow comment and subscribe and uh, as usual i've been ben i've been josh and we'll see you guys Later. Have a good game week, everyone.